Good afternoon. This is John Stevens again with another post on my video blog or vlog about fishing and specifically fishing in our region of the world, the Great Lakes and Upper Ohio Valley region. Today my topic is late season or late summer trout tactics. Now we all know that when the state stocks its trout in the stock trout streams, it's put and take. You know, people come in, they catch everything. They keep it, they wait again for more trout to be stocked, they catch them, they keep them, and after a while, trout start to get scarce. This was the subject of another post that I made already, to catch or to release. And hopefully people, you know, took something away from that, started to see the value of catch and release, so you have trout late into the season, but if you don't, we're going to have you covered here, so that you can find some trout even late season, and even in the areas that are outside of the delayed harvest areas that are specifically designed to create late season trout fishing opportunities. So that said, you could go to the delayed harvest area, but I'm looking at just, you know, the areas that would be attractive naturally to trout based on the habitat that they have to offer. And specifically with trout, when we get late into the summer, we're looking at water temperature. Water temperature becomes this particular form of habitat. If you watched my previous video about the different types of structure fish can have, I said seasonal temperature relief was a form of structure. This is sort of an example with trout of how that can happen. As your lakes that they stock them into and your rivers become extremely, extremely warm, like let's say in late July, August, and early September, maybe even mid-September, let's be blunt, the water temperatures are going to climb into the upper 70s, maybe even 80 degrees, especially in the case of the lakes. So this causes trout to search for cold water. They need the cold water to have the amount of oxygen in the water, densely condensed, to enable them to survive. Trout need highly oxygenated water with cold temperatures. So you have two different, you know, situations, three different situations really that could work out. The first would be with lakes. In lakes with specifically deeper water, you got to get below the thermocline. And for those of you who are new to fishing, the thermocline is a temperature, and in every different lake, it's going to be different based on the dynamics of the lake. But the thermocline will be the depth at which cold water begins to stay cold. Because you see, the surface layer of water is like insulation in a house. A certain amount of the water is going to get warm in the summer and cold in the winter time, right? Because the sun's going to hit it or the cold in the winter time is going to hit it. The cold air in the winter, the warm air in the summer. But below that layer of insulation water, the thermocline, is another layer where the water temperature is relatively unchanging. It'll keep a cooler temperature year-round. It won't go too, too cold in the wintertime where fish will freeze to death. But it won't get too, too warm in the summertime where fish that need colder temperatures can't find relief from the heat. And this is where temperature, seasonal temperature relief structure comes into play. Trout will move deep in the summertime. If you have a lake that is deep enough to do that and give them that relief, like a big flood control dam or like a great lake, or like a finger lake, a glacier lake that's really deep, they're going to go deep there. So how do you get at them? you got to basically troll at that point. you got to have a boat, and you got to be using a controlled depth tactic, such as a dipsy diver or a downrigger, where you can predict that your bait will be at a certain depth that you're charting fish at, or that you're charting bait the fish are feeding at, or feeding upon at a certain depth. Now, for everybody who's out there, we don't all have nice boats. We don't have the ability to go to you know, Great Lakes and Finger Lakes and everything else and big flood control dams. So what if you're you know, a bank fisherman? Well, this still applies to streams and big rivers. Category two, I suppose, would be in streams and big rivers. You're going to have big streams and big rivers get warm as the sun. They're really wide, and the sun beats down on their waters. It's flowing around, and it gets it warm. So the mouths of creeks become uh, a good place to look for trout. If you have cold water creeks dumping into the big rivers and the big streams, at their confluences, there will be cold water coming into a warmer body of water. Trout will feel that cold water and they'll go up towards those cold water side streams. Trout may even enter the cold water side streams to get out of the warmer river water or warmer big stream water if they can. 
And category three would be the outflows of reservoirs. Let's just say you have a reservoir that empties from the bottom. These can be called tail races, these can be called outflows, but they're not spillways. A spillway runs over the top of a dam. It takes all the warm water off the top. Trout in late season don't need that warm water. But if it's coming out of the bottom of a dam, well, that's a whole different story because down deep below the thermocline, you're going to have cold water. And that cold water at the bottom of the dam is being discharged out of the bottom into another creek. And that's going to draw trout from warmer bodies of water. They're going to feel that cold water coming out and come right into it. So your outflows of reservoirs, especially the ones that let out at the bottom of dams, typically draw trout in in the late season, like July, August, September, when it's really, really warm in the surrounding rivers. So I hope this is helpful for those of you who fish for trout um, who know that you know, delayed harvest areas aren't always all they're cracked up to be. Um, sometimes they work, sometimes the fish get pushed out by high water because stock trout don't really do well with high water and uh, they sometimes get blown out into other areas. And hopefully this will give fishermen who both have a boat and don't have a boat some strategies for finding some late season trout. And also there always is the option of looking up your wild trout waterways with natural reproduction and wild trout or native trout if you're into that. Some of those streams offer some quality fishing for some decent sized trout. You're not going to get any monsters usually, but it would be an opportunity to get in some fish uh, that you know, may not have seen a lot of lines because they're usually in remote areas and get some success late in the season. This is John Stevens signing off again, still dealing with the coronavirus, which is really a bummer. And uh, this is the second post I've made today, but uh, I'm going to stagger the publication so every five days an episode will come out. Take care and best of luck in your fishing pursuits.